Hi and welcome back to our channel. We've recently received a lot of requests for a more detailed video, so we put one together for you in real time, in a step-by-step -step basis. We hope we'll answer most of the questions and be of assistance and help. So as always, please feel free to comment below and we'd love to hear from you. So, let's get it going and start from the beginning and it does come with a bit of an adult warning. The face you're going to be presented with at the start is ooh, not a pleasant one. This one's not that brilliant, but the first one's even worse. Anyway, let's hope that you enjoy it. Thanks very much. Hi, so what you can see, hopefully, is a little bit of this area around here is quite white. I suffer because of my age and general lack of sleep, quite bag, large bags under in there, quite black. So it's a bit of preparation before pro applying any form of uh, foundation. I apply for quite a thick coat of Anasol, which is stuff that you buy from the chemist for piles of all things. But it's pretty good at shrinking all this area around here. So I apply it five, ten minutes on before I start putting my foundation on, let it rest and then just pat it in all the way over. Just shrink those very large bags as well. Now before I also apply any form of foundation, I will put on some sort of preparation or a primer. And in this case, because I'm going to be using Crolon TV paint sticks as my full coverage foundation, I'm going to use their sister product, which is a barrier foam. And it just comes out as this fluffy, fluffy stuff, a bit like you're doing your, uh, your wet shaving really. So I'm just going to apply that all the way over to where I'm going to be applying my foundation. So don't forget around your forehead, around your eyes, and take it into your chin. Get it all in there. It's a bit like that magic stuff they use to mark the football pitches these days for free kicks. It just sort of absorbs very nicely into your skin. Um, I also use HD Primer from Crolon. Um, that's very good as well. But this one is very quick to apply. Okay, that's great. Just dry my hands off a little bit there. I can't let that settle in a bit. Um, as you can see, it's great having a, a worn out, lived in face. But, um, I want to sort of change the shape a little bit. And what I use for doing that is this product here. It's by a company called Art Harding, and quite simply, it's some tabs here that I will apply in strategic places above my eye I use along the jawline here and then I will connect them together but to get the best sort of fit for this what I need to do is make sure my skin is nice and clean and oil free so I get myself a little bit of surgical spirits so let's get myself some surgical spirits here and just wipe the areas I want to attach this to generally just above the eyebrows, my existing eyebrows here. I'm just going to take that little bit of oil out around those areas there. Pop a little bit more on around the jawline, really. Because I'm hoping to attach roughly about here. Up, depending on the wig style, really, I have a tendency to go for wigs that are a little bit of a fringe on them and not too open, so that I can cover them. And for completeness, I'm just going to do a little bit around the temple area here. So that's really just drying that area out there. Let that soak in for a second or two when I do that. Okay, let's have a look at these little things here. So it is a little tab like this. If you tear them off like that, I have a tendency to put this little bit here on the inside against my skin. So I'll just peel off the back here and then just strategically place it above where I think I can get the best lift. And it's roughly about here for me, just above my existing eyebrow. So let's do that. Lift that up, just gently press it on. Now you can see as I stretch the elastic above my head here, it's quite a lift really, there's quite a significant difference between one eye and the other. So take the other section, peel it back, and attach it to the jawline. I try and get along this jawline here that when I pull it in, I can't see it easily. So let's just pop it along the jawline there sure it's in and again you can pull you can see it's quite a stretch there so that will eventually when I tie them up after I've done my foundation latch together like so and as you can see there hopefully 
there's quite a lift between this eye here and this eye here. It gives me much more room to work in here, and it actually takes a few of the years off. It pulls this side back here. So that's number one. I'm beginning to look like a little bit of an Australian character here with bangling corks or dangling corks. Right, there's one. Let's use it. the other side. Pop that in a similar position. Like so. Okay, give it a bit of a stretch. And make sure you do prepare the skin very well here with the surgical spirits because you know if you're out clubbing or whatever you may be and it's a warm evening you do sweat a bit and if it isn't attached it can look like a mini stroke if they fall off which is not the most desirable look okay so again attach along the jawline it's on nicely just give it a bit of a tug to make sure we're okay just a little bit of a tester there yeah that's not too bad good so I've got two of them in there I'm not too sure sometimes I'm going to put them across here I'm just going to lift this section up see if I'm getting any undue creases or if I'm forcing any anywhere just put it a little bit I think I could probably do with a little one there just to pull that side a little bit more so let's just attach one there pop that into place just above the temple about so yeah that's good rest it over the ear do the same on the opposite side, roughly in about the same place. Okay, I'm not going to attach them up at the moment. The reason being is that if I go and attach them all up and I start moving around like this, putting the makeup on, the foundation on, what actually happens is I'm going to tug them quite hard. Maybe a possibility they're going to slip or fall out of position. So what I'm going to do is just take a standard, if I can find one. Yep, here we go. Oh. Wig cap and just pop it on over the top just to keep them out of my way for a moment. So let's just pop that up high and just tuck all these in out of place. Okay. Girls, I look like a face out of crime watch, don't I? Here we go. So they're out of place for now. Yep, that'll do. As I said earlier, I'm going to be using a product called Crolon TV Paint Stick and I'm going to be using for what I consider to be the overall, the frontal projection bit here, a shade 5W. That's a Crolon Paint Stick and hopefully shooting on the top of the screen here you'll see a better picture of it. The shade is 5W. Okay, so just give it a bit exposed there. And all you need to do is literally paint it all over. And I'm going to take it just down to here, really, just down to the jawline for this moment in time. Working it all the way in. Because this is a full coverage foundation, I haven't done any colour correction underneath. If you've got any very dark spots that you might find that have a beard on, this should cover it, but if it doesn't, the other products such as Derma Colour, and I've always found that the shade D. 32, which is like a terracotta colour, works really well. Blend that in first and then apply this on the top. Always being a little bit careful around the eyes here. As you notice, I'm pulling down from most of the face here, trying to get it on. Um, I don't want to do that near the eye because it's, you know, it really stretches the skin there. So I'm kind of, kind of go, instead of going vertical, I'm going to go horizontal underneath there just to protect that little bit of thinner skin in there if I can. All over along the brow, everywhere really. As you can see, it's quite thick. This, the beauty of this very this sort of semi-thick, thick sort of product. It's oily. It does blend in incredibly well, and as you get warm, it applies into your skin a little bit better, and I think even looks better. So I'm just taking a standard latex sponge, and I'm going to work it all the way in, all the way down to the jawline. Um, you can, if you wish, just make it a little bit moist. I don't think I need to, but I'm... you can, just to make it a little bit easier. So let's just push that in. All right, working it in all the way around the eyes. Like when you're building a house, it's important you get your foundation right. So take your time, really, in getting it all in and smoothed out all along. A bit gentle around the eyes. 
So it's all the way down to the jawline here for a moment. We get the underside of the news. I'm just diving down here because I've got a more of a magnifying mirror and I can see if I've missed anywhere. So forgive me if I keep diving down like that. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. Got it around everywhere that I can. Looks reasonably even using this latex sponge. Anyway, I'm going to put that aside. And now I'm just going to pick up a foundation brush. This one here is by Crodon as well. This is a natural foundation brush. So it's quite absorbent. And because I will be sealing this slightly later with a translucent powder, I want to get as much of the surface oil off as I can because I don't want to be looking like crocodile skin. And I really want to work it in. So. What I'm going to do is just very gently work this in all the way over. Like so. Now, it's no point in putting any makeup more than three fingers above here, this area here, really, because this is in the wig line, and all it's going to do is get into the into your wig area itself. It's a waste of time and a waste of cosmetics, and it mucks your wig up as well. Okay, I've got all that around. So that's number five. Just making sure everything's nice and tight on those straps. I'm happy with that. Now, because you really your face and your neck and your chest are not always the same sort of colour, to make it a little bit more realistic, what I've done is taken one shade lighter, a 4W in this case. You can see the 4W in there. Again, hopefully a little picture will be shooting up here somewhere. Um, so using the 4W, I'm just going to take that from the jawline and down my jawline here onto my neck. I could have used the 5 all the way down, but... I have a tendency to use sort of a five, a four, and then if I'm quite light in the chest area down here, if I'm using an open top dress or anything like that, I have a tendency to use a three. So it gradually builds down. After all, we don't want to be looking like a red matchstick, do we? So let's get that down all the way down into that area there. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. It's just... Again, spread all that out. Always keep checking from as many angles as you can to see you've got everything covered. into the cavical area here, the bone. And what I do is I've got a, a fresh one of these foundation brushes, the soft ones, and I'm just working it in. And I'm going to take off the majority of the surface oil that sits there. Okay, just a quick recap. So that's five all the way around the frontal area. And so as soon as I get to the jaw area here, I'm going to blend it down to a four, which I've done. Nice and simple. Now what I'm going to do is take a drastically different shade. Um, I don't know if it's going to come across like that on the, on the camera, but this is a, a 9W. Um, and this is a really like a chocolatey colour here. And I'm going to do a little bit of pre-contouring. 
Um, I affectionately call this E's and threes, really, and hopefully it'll become a little bit evident in a minute. Um, one of the fundamental things, particularly in my skull, um, that makes me stand out as being more, more masculine is really the jawline here. The fact that I've not got much depth on my cheeks around this area here, and my nose is a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 9W and gently do a line all the way along my jaw until I can reach my cleft area here. This section here roughly stays about the same dimension all your life. As we uh, get a little bit older and the skin shrinks and the bone shrinks, we kind of get the jowling down the sides. What we're trying to do is create a perfect oval shape. So if we use a darker colour on the jawlines for a moment, it absorbs the light and takes a little bit of that edge off. So I'm going to do that. Take a little bit underneath chin and then pick it up at the corresponding point along here. Hopefully if I look in the camera now a little bit you can see this kind of absorbing the light and giving me slightly more of an oval shape. Um, one line I want to point out at this stage is if I take a line from the top of my ear to the corner of my mouth and I rock that line it sits quite nicely on my cheekbone here. And that's what I really want to create is a deeper cheekbone, a little bit constructed, a little bit of a construction line. I can always adjust it a bit later on and probably will. So what I'll do is I'll take this darker shade and I'll go along from the top of my ear until I reach roughly parallel with the end of my nose and the bone starts to get softer, the socket bone. I'll take it in a little bit here like the letter J. So let's do that. So let's take that along that line. A little bit. And just pull it in a little bit there. So it's looking a little bit like the letter J. It's quite, you can see in this light because it's quite a powerful light. It's very, very dark, and that's because of the surface oil being incredibly reflective. So let's just take that down and move it in again, roughly there. I'm just got to try and balance out a little bit if I can. Okay, now I'm going to take the top part of the oval across the top here. Remember I've just said about three fingers up here. It's a bit of a waste of time if you go over there. Um, I do put the shading in this area here because I may be using an open type of wig, in which case I do want a bit of depth around that part of the head. So from the top part of the temple, around both sides, and then across the top of the temple a little bit here. Ooh, we're looking really dark. Um, now what I do is I will do a little bit of contouring, you know, pre-contouring of my nose. So I'm just going to take a fairly standard foundation brush. And I'm going to put the brush in, or the shade in, just inside the bridge of my nose here. And just draw it down, parallel, here and around the bulbous bit there. And again... A little bit on this side, down and around a little bit. What I don't want to do is replace one potential problem with another, in other words, create a great big long ski slope. So I'm just going to turn the ends in a little bit here. And then where the nose joins the rest of the face, about here. Let's just fill that in a bit more. And again down this side. So it's a bit frightening when you see that. <laughs> but honestly, when you start to blend it in a little bit, you find that the colours actually drop down it's quite significantly. So I'm going to try and keep this as straight as I can down here for the moment. hopefully see that it's dropping a little bit in its intensity. So let's just move this in. Sometimes just call these the construction lines. I had a bit of depth into your face, but you can always go over them later on to make them slightly darker, or we can knock it back a little bit 
with some powder so it's not quite so intense. So let's move along to the jawline and bring that in a bit better. I'm mindful of, very careful of, as I do want the white strips around this area here because I want the light to go into my mouth and make sure the light goes up into my eyes for later on. Sorry, my hand's in the way there, isn't it? I'm then just using the thinner section of the wedge on this to blend it in. Okay, I've got yet another clean one of those natural brushes. I'm just going to go over the same area to buff that in a little bit. So it's not quite so intense. Try and get rid of any other harsh lines if there are any in there. That's reasonably good. I'm quite happy with that. As you can see, all through this exercise, I've been doing this a lot, trying to get in there. And you can imagine if I have these straps on, and they're quite tight, I'm going to put a lot of stress on them. So that's the reason why I leave them till the end. And before anybody asks, you do get used to wearing them, and you can smile, and it doesn't look as though you've been a, you're a rabbit entrapped you know, in, in headlights. Ooh, like this all the time. So let's see, pretty good all the way around. You can probably see in the light there's a little bit of shine on there, a little bit of sheen. Um, okay, so once I'm happy with that, what I'll do is I will take a old pre-coated um, powder puff. Um, the sister product for this for sealing it, because it's important that you seal it really, um, is the translucent uh, professional Crayon translucent powder. And I use shade TL3. Um, the reason why I use TL3 is because it's a pinky white um, colour and it's, it seems to work well on my complexion. So I just put a very little piece on and I'm, what I'm doing is very gently using what's already in the powder puff and popping it all the way around to seal what's in place. The reason why I go to so much trouble to blend everything in with the, with the natural foundation brushes because I want to remove every bit of surface oil possible because of this stage here. If I go and seal my face with a lot of oil, it has a lot, a lot of oil on the surface uh, with powder, it just looks like crocodile skin and that is awful. So that's going all the way, I'm just going to press it in a little bit around my eyes. Okay. That's pretty good all the way over. Oh, excuse me, we're going to lean in a little bit and grab hold of a, a brush just to take any excess off. So I've done that very, very, very lightly and i am got a nice dry finish all the way over. It's sealed in there. 
and I know that's going to last me all night long and I won't have to worry about it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is because I'm going to be working with powdered, mainly powdered uh, eyeshadows I think, I'm just going to put some very loose powder underneath my eye here on the cheekbone here. Probably seen this quite a lot. And I'll put this area here. The reason being for doing this is that if I get any fallout, I'm not going to drastically damage and have to repair the foundation and all the work I've already done. Okay, it's only fairly lightly in there. That's good. Now, the bit that I... Ooh, that's good. <laughs> so let's just strap this up a little bit and get a bit of shape into my face. So let's just lift that. That's set up nicely and take its sister component and just strap them up and tightly put them into place so latch together oh, I'm happy with that one it's a daisy take the other side you can use 3m micro pour tape on this one get it cleaned um, you can use that with a little bit of uh, mastic glue as I've seen um, it's a very good Oops, Daisy. Right, to save a bit of time, I've just put them all into place, quite happy with that. Sometimes I put a little bit of 3M tape around it just to seal it in place, but I think that'll do for now. Okay, so that's good, it's nice and tight. I can move around without a problem. Good, so we're okay around here. So I'm going to start with my eyes areas around here, um, and I'm going to put a little bit of a primer. I use a Crotal eyeshadow primer, hopefully there's a picture up here somewhere, um, all over my eye area before I put any cosmetics on and the eyeshadows on. Squeeze a little bit on the hand and let's just work that into the areas. Okay, so that's along the lid. And all the way up if I can. Just helps the eyeshadow to key onto something. The colour I'm going to use for my lids, um, I'm going to use a matte colour called Rich Core. And I'm going to take it virtually all the way over the, the lid up to the socket line. And if you don't know where the socket line is, it's the area back here that you poke your eye out on. The area that really sort of sets the depth of your eyes. So let's start by just. I generally start in the middle of the eye. Just go up vertically into the socket line, like so. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm keeping in mind an, a line that goes from the corner of my eye to the corner of my nose, like this angle here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't really want to draw anything outside there at this moment in time. So let's just apply that into place. Good, quite happy with that. The same the other side. Okay, just working it in gently, trying to get it even as much as I can. Just gone over halfway of the eye here. Your nose has a nasty habit of absorbing all the light, so what we 
do there in a minute is just put a little bit of a lighter colour on the inside of the eye. Because I'm going for a little bit of an exaggerated look. I need to open this area a bit higher because I'm going to be using quite intense pairs of false eyelashes later on. And that will cover part of this eye. So I'm actually going to take this colour, I'm going to do a little bit of an angle. And move slightly above my brow bone. My bone's in here. And I like to arch it like so at this stage. So I'm arching this area in. Again, just keeping it at a reasonable angle. Just keep arching it all the way in. Fill that area in, the socket line. Try and repeat it on the other side. Get the same depth of arch if possible. My face, like everybody else's face, is not symmetrical, so I'm always a little bit of a challenge on this side of the face to get them to look equal. a little bit more. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is just open up the inside of the eyes a little bit and I'm going to use a MAC iridescent sort of colour like so and it's it's frost. It's not quite white but it's got a nice little sheen to it really and it will open the eye up quite nicely. Because it's quite a loose powder, I like to make sure I get as much of it off before I put it on, so to speak. Right, let's pop that into the right into that area. Right into my tear duct there. Slightly beyond for a minute now. That's good. And I've got distinct borders between the two. So I've got one colour here and then the white coming in there. And what I have a tendency to do is to set my face out on both sides. So they look the same, and that way when I come to blend them and get to get the final look, I know I'm starting from an equal point on both sides. So I'm quite happy with that, that's giving me the intensity and the light here. This is broadening my eyes out, because I'm, I'm hoping to achieve some quite wide and almond shaped eyes. So one of the effects of putting these lifts on is the fact you can actually see my own eyebrows here. They're quite high up here. Now I don't particularly want a, an over-the-top drag look. What I want to do is to be able to fill this space in up here with colours that don't look too strong. Um, but you can at least see them. So I'm just going to fiddle about a minute, see what colours I've got. Um, I'll come back on that one. I think I'm going to try and find a pinky type colour so let's have a look this one's quite a nice one um, this is a colour called Swish getting up here somewhere hopefully and I'm just going to ease that colour in so I'll grab hold of it a nice clean brush so let's try and pop this in and see what it looks like so because I don't have actual eyebrows in place at the moment what I'll do is go up as high as I can to my current eyebrows and try and get a nice even arch around here. So let's go on the outside here and just try and get an arch coming all the way into this particular colour. Joining it up with the darker original colour that I put in there and taking it right into inside my eye here 
Yeah, if you can see that, I'm going right in that area there. Take it up. Now the reason why I didn't do my eyebrows first is because your eyebrows are really the frame of your face. And once I put a frame in or on, I'm forced to work inside it. So what I'm going to try to do here to even my brows out and balance my face is fill all this colour in around here first and then accentuate my brows. So I'm happy with that side. Just pick this side in here. Pick it up. Side again. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So what I've got is I've got the dark sort of purple colour on the outside here, pulling the eye out, a little bit of white reflective in here, and then I'm using this sort of swish colour, which is a very light sort of pinky colour, um, right the way across the top here at the moment. So you've got three distinct colours. I haven't even started to blend them in at the, this moment in time. And really to make sure that my eyebrows will be framed, I will then go to back to the white uh, frost colour that I use for the inside of my eye and gently go around the top section here underneath the existing my existing hairs like so just to make it a little bit more defined I'm actually defining the curve here using the side of the brush there. So I'm happy with that side. I'm not too sure this is picking up on the camera, but I hope so. Again, just white. I'm going against the hairs a little bit to undercoat them or overcoat them. And as I'm doing that, light will reflect off them and, and they don't become quite as visible. Okay. I'm quite happy with that. And now what I need to do is a little bit of the magic, which is the blending them together, blending the colours together so we don't get hard, hard edges. Relatively small brush for relatively small areas. So I'm just going to take this very tight line here and just try and soften it. Try and soften these lines along here a little bit. That's all you need to do is just gently work it all the way in. Concentrate along the line, don't take it into the body too much. It becomes a little bit more fuzzy, not quite so harsh and not so noticeable. That's what we want. Take the brush to the other side and work that line in again. I have got quite a harsh line because there is a big colour difference between this large section here and the inside white section here. So what I'll do is I'll take another brush, it's relatively clean, well it is clean, and just try and break that edge down a little bit, blend it in a little bit so it's not quite so aggressive. sure that by the time I got my lashes on this area here on both sides is not going to be dominant enough and I'm probably going to end up having to put some more on so I'm quite prepared to do that. Um, what I'm going to do now is roughly shaping 
where my eyebrows are going to go for my eyebrows. I really like to use um, an eyebrow pencil by Mac. It's a, a spike one. It's very thin. I don't know whether you can see that very well, but it's extremely accurate, which is something that I quite like. So I'm just going to really start on the inside here. I generally try to get them parallel, so I'm going to draw a little bit, two little spots along this area here somewhere, so I know I'm going to get them in the same position. So I'm just a little dot there, a little dot there. Have a quick look. Yeah, I'm going to look at straight at you. It looks about right. So and then I'm just going to draw a very thin. line arching up and out like so um, I'm always bearing in mind this sort of line here I don't really want to exceed on the outside here I'm very happy with that I just make it slightly thicker I don't know if it's coming across in the camera but this is a sort of dark brown almost black colour so I want them quite thin do little stabby motions like so I quite like that sort of shape I just gotta make sure that I haven't got too wide a gap around this area here so let me just draw in the other one Over the years I've used lots of other eyebrow pencils but this one seems to be the best for me because it's easier to control and if I'm totally honest I don't really like using eyebrow pencils. I prefer to use eyebrow wax colours. I'm just gonna I'm actually gonna finish this off with them anyway. But this does give me a reasonably good straight line. Hopefully you can see that. Um, what I'm alluding to is these eyebrow powders. Here again it's another Crolon product. It comes with a typical its, its own little eyebrow brush. And I prefer doing it this way because it gives the tattooed look rather than a hard line. <laughs> just broke that off and then I just go over what I've already done a little bit this powder will pick up any hairs I've got in there that's predominant and help to I believe soften the look of the eyebrow a bit more I believe that eyebrows are brother and sister and identical twins, so don't lose sleep if they're not exactly perfect. Because mine never are, no matter how I try. So get that around. Again, that line is pretty good in my opinion. I haven't gone too far out. So we've got quite a nice little bit of height. I'm quite happy with that gap in there at the moment. I could take it down a little bit I suppose but let's settle for that now what you may see or you may not see is there's a little bit of colour missing in here so just look back in again and see if there's anything missing and just blend it in a little bit more so we go right up to that right up to the brows being a little bit careful that we don't touch it because we don't want to smudge them Um, what I'm going to use is Amazing Shine and the number 38. They're quite long and full. Um, I use these ones because A, they're cheap, which is nice. B, they're very, very flexible and easy to apply, which stops me getting stressed, which is fantastic. Um, a little look at them there. I don't know if they're coming up. Yep, hopefully so. Um, I've got quite wide eyes, so I don't really have to cut these, which is fantastic. 
um, just having a little look it's roughly even both sides so I can use them on the left or right eye not a problem I always take them off quite gently and what I will do is you can demonstrate here they're very very pliable use a pair of just common old eye tweezers hair tweezers call it what we want hold it in the middle um, using the appropriate glue which in this case is duo it's a water-based latex glue um, you can use copy decks and I do for myself it's the same sort of stuff I put a thin line so how steady my arm is my hands are in front of the camera which would be amazing if I can get this done right first time a very thin line all the way along the strip making sure concentrating you get on the outside and the inside because that's really where you want it to glue up okay let's see if the proof is in the pudding okay we've got it there now a little bit of basic maths two spheres come into contact they're gonna they're, they're gonna contact somewhere so all I do really is just jab it on there somewhere near and then I'm gonna pick up the point so okay it's a bit like a dead cat a bit of a bit of floating there but you can see it's just stuck on at one point now all I'm gonna do is use the tweezers to very gently pop it into position on the inside doesn't matter if it's inside or the outside first just hold it there for a couple of seconds and then pick the other extremity out and pop it as near as I can to my own lash line. Count a couple of seconds. Turn the tweezers over a little bit and just dab it down. Just make sure I've got that into position there. I believe I've got it into place. Looks good from here. Okay, it's good. Now we're going to cut off camera for a minute while I get the other one on. Okay, welcome back. Ooh, I've got the second one on. Um, now what I wanted to do now is a little bit more impact in the eyes. So I'm going to use a liquid liner on the top, this top section here, and using the band of the false eyelash really as my sort of contour area here, take it out to the end and do the little bit of a flick in that area there. And then I'm going to hopefully <laughs> be able to line my inside, my waterline, and my tight line, the inside of my eyes, that was a little bit tricky with dark, just to give that sort of very dark smouldering eye. So let's just start, if I can, with a liquid liner. Um, I don't always like using liquid liners because when they go wrong, boy, do they go wrong. But, but because I've already got the line really there, that's a strip of the eyelash in there, I know I really can't make too much of an error and it go into my eyes and give me a horrible blotty eye look. So... I'm just going to see if I can get the line from the inside here all the way around the outside and just to sort of flick up the outside here. So I'm just going to dive into the mirror for a second. So hang on. So I've got that part of the eye right into the tear duct, right the way along to the edge here. And now I'm just going to flick this section out here a little bit. Just a little bit of a flick out there. We can do our best to try and do the sign now. Coming in from the top, as tight to it as I can get, and just run this liquid eye line along the top of it great okay that's that done so that's the inside of this eye also the water line on both of them here so it makes you can see it makes our eyes look a little bit more intense i've got a little bit of messy edges on the outside here that i'm going to finish off and i've also got to obviously put some mascara on there but let's just start with the outside just to finish the edges off i'm going to go back with the um eyebrow brush really I'm going to use MAC Carbon, a nice dark colour here, and just fold out these edges a little bit. So I'll just put a little bit in there. I'm always a bit worried, a bit dubious when I use black, because that's a nasty habit of going everywhere. You can use a liquid or you can use a cream around this area if you want to. But I just want a nice smooth sort of blending area here. So I'm just going to go to the edge here and very gently smudge really with the brush all this area in here I'm taking it up a little bit you can see this tick I'm just doing and I'm going to fold it back in so I'm really creating like a border here the edge I'm going to fold that in into that area there and just along that crease line a bit more 
So you can see I've got a gap there at the moment. And why, the reason why I've left a gap in there is because I want to really fade that in and keep this area quite defined. So if I move over to the other eye, you can see the eye has hopefully started to come out a little bit more. Just take the excess off. Fine. Fold it back in again. Again, both sides I've just left a little bit of a gap between them because I really want to fold them in. So I've kept that brush I used for the silver on the inside aside. I want to use a little bit of that silver that's on the brush and just fade that little gap in a bit so it's going a browny sort of grey colour in there. So it's not quite so distinct around that area there. Just keep working it in. Transfer that over to the other side. Try and fade that in a bit as well. So the last thing I want to do is highlight this area around here, make sure there's lots of reflective light around here, and I'm going to use a, a very finite um, glitter. And it's from Crolon, again, it's uh, called Noble, and it's Glamour Sparks, and I think this is probably the best glitter you're ever going to get anywhere. It's so fine, it's unbelievable, and it's so easy to put in and blend in. Just grab a brush, this is what the offending item is you can see it hopefully somewhere around about here um and i've used the color noble and it's like it's almost as soft as a pillow Pop a little bit on your brush not too much and what i'm going to do is highlight all the way around that area there and particularly at the ends here so let's pop it in you can see here that you can see how fluffy it is. It really does catch the light beautifully. Right down that in there. And then just work it in. Just gently work it in. That side. Again. Inside of the bridge. Working it in. There. I'm putting so much on that you can see it really. I wouldn't normally put this much on, but at least you can see it into that area there and then gently working it in. Reflective is that not bad? Okay, now what I'm going to do is just make sure that I've got my existing uh, eyelashes and obviously my false ones all blended together, matted together. I always take the mascara out like such plunk and then just take the excess and put it on the outside here. I hate to keep pumping it in and pumping it out because you're pumping air into it and you're drying it out and I'm fed up with throwing about stuff away that's half used because it's all dried itself out. So try and avoid doing that if you can. Um, when you do, your, when I do my own lashes at the top here, I have a tendency to look upwards into a mirror. So I'd have a mirror up here and look up. And when I'm doing the bottom ones, I look down. Because if I look at it like this, I always get tram lines all the way under here, which is not the desired look. So I've got a little mirror down here that uh, is helping me out here. So I'm going to look up like so and just gently crush it all together. Try and build the coats up rather than having a good go at putting a lot on in one go because it looks a bit clunky. This side here, obviously. Push that in. I don't like using the tools of torture, which is eyelash curlers, because I am so ham-fisted, I end up catching my skin, and it really hurts. Um, another way of making...
making sure you don't make too many mistakes when you do this left hand for the left eye right hand for the right eye as you see me move over then okay i'm quite happy with that one um i generally do the top ones first and then give a good old blink uh first of all i'm going to check that there's no excessive mascara going up here which means i've got them way too long which is a, and then uh by doing that i sometimes transfer down below like so so i'll do the bottom ones i'll just look at a slightly different angle and i'll just pick them up come out on camera is quite good right. so what we need to do now is I'm pretty happy with the eyes in general I will do a little bit of touching up in a minute I'm sure but uh, let me just wipe away all this excess white powder that you see here which is not very complimentary just move that away it's done its job it's sort of sat there it's dried into the foundation and the drags call that a bit of cooking um, to help with the reflex white bit in there reflecting a lighter colour anyway. Gently move that out of the way. So as we're actually building a face, I reckon I've got the roof on. I'm quite happy with that. You can still see my bags. Okay, so that's good. All the way around. Now I believe personally whenever I do makeovers for either myself or anybody else, um, that the eyes are fantastic. But the real key for me is getting the lip structure right in terms of its definition and shape and also the cheek definition because a lot of people have a tendency to wear a wig that's right down here and as you can see as I'm doing this it really covers the eyes a little bit so if you're one of these people like I usually was that worried about my eyes a lot and getting the definition right it's not the end of the world if it doesn't go perfect every time just concentrate on this area here so and when I do my lips, uh, I have a tendency to get an old brush and give them a good old beating over here. Uh, two reasons. Number one is to get rid of the dead skin all the way around, this, around here, so it's not all flaky and horrid. And two is to make sure that the blood cells are pumping around a bit and it kind of puffs them up a little bit more. So it's a bit, a bit more pouty. Let's start around this area here, the lips. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around the outside of the lip with a lip liner. I've chosen um, what am I chosen? Night Moth, which is my favourite one, my go-to one. I'm just going to go around the outside there. And then I'm going to shape it into this final shape before I fill it all in. So, okay, so all I'm doing is following my natural line along here, along the top. A little bit of an arch in there. Okay. Because I am a genetic man. My hairs underneath here, where they've been shaving over a considerable period of time, they're quite brittle and they're quite like, like little nails or little sort of pins all the way around. So no matter how sort of gently I try and draw the lines around, it's pretty bumpy. So I have a tendency to grab hold of a brow brush. And what I'll do is I'll smooth it out. All these ones are smooth all the way around. So I get a nice line. So it looks like it's a bit of a tattooed lip, really. And it, what it'll do also is it gives me the capability, because it's quite a finite instrument, really, is to be able to move the shape about a little bit more or control the shape a little bit more. So I take from generally the point in here and just arch it around both sides. And it also makes it nice and smooth and it's not so bumpy. So let's have a go. Not fantastic, but a pretty good guideline for me to start working on here. Now I've got a choice to make with what sort of lipstick to use. Um, to me, it falls into two distinct categories. Those that are long-lasting for nights out when you don't want to keep topping up, and they're generally a lip stainer or a sealer. And um, because they are of that nature, they're quite aggressive into your skin. They can dry it out. So I would always put on a primer, a lip seal, or something like that. It makes it easy to put the lipstick on, but it also protects the lip. Um, what I'm going to do for this one is just a standard type of... Um, lipstick really that's a pearlized lipstick got a little bit of shine to it so I'm gonna fill this whole area in here so okay back again now what I've finally settled on after 
a great debate with oneself is I'm going to be using a lipstick called LCP 626 by Prolon and the LCP basically denotes that it's a pearlized lipstick. I like the colour. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Yes. So I put it on rather than just whap it around, use a lip brush and just follow my natural lines that I've already put in there. So, okay, I'm quite happy with the shape there. I've got too big a mouth. Okay, that's good. That's a nice shape going all the way around. Um, what I want to do really is get some nice shape into here. I'm very conscious of the colour kind of going around here. So the mid-tone colour I want in here is to be able to blend all this together. So when your eye actually goes round your face, nothing looks out of place. Apart from my two eyes and my nose and my mouth, that is. So I'm going to find a nice sort of colour that I can blend in along the cheekbone to get a bit more definition. Because the face looks a bit flat at the moment. Um, what I try to do is not use this powder if I can get away with it because I've already got powder on there at the moment and if you can imagine looking at my face, if you can bear it, looking at a high powered microscope is a little bit like masses of tennis balls all being out on the floor. There's lots of little gaps all the molecules together with the powder and what I want to do if possible is kind of fill those gaps in with a product and also sort of put a sheen across it like a little layer of plastic um, to make it plastic fantastic. Use a cream base under this area here to build the depth up here. I use for my cheek area here to build them out a little bit is this cream blend by MAC. It's quite a nice little cut. I'm just going to apply it along my cheekbone along here. I'll do it on both sides, hopefully even using a fairly flat sort of brush, gently easing in. I'm trying to follow the contour that I previously laid down with the foundation, so you can just about see it there. I'm going to blend it in in a minute. So along that brow bone, or the cheekbone, beg your pardon, put it in there. Okay, I've got the arch roughly right. I'm going to take a flat kapuki brush. Exhibit A. And I'm going to start to blend it in before it dries into, before it dries in, basically. So let's just start to blend that in. Work it in there. Good. Same the other side. Work it in all the way up to the temple. Try and keep this nice sort of J flowing shape in there. Get in there. It's good. Both sides. I'm just going to use a little bit of this again. Same flat brush, a little bit of chin area, slightly underneath, and I'm going to jawbone a little bit just to give a consistent colour all the way around. And really work it in. Coming back now, what I want to do is bring some of these features a bit more forward, or, or more forward. So I'm going to highlight this area around here, down the centre of the nose, in the V area here, and along what I call the tram lines here. And I'm going to use a mineralised powder for doing that. So I've got here is this MAC product here. Hopefully a nice little picture coming up here. It's the mineralised skin finish. It's called Soft and Gentle. And to me, this is just fantastic for night time, really. It really does give a nice sort of reflective coating around it without being too heavy. So again, I've taken a fresh Kapuki brush. Quite a bit on. Give it a good old tap. And I always start with 
the forehead area here just if I've overloaded the brush a bit at least I can move that in a bit more so just pop a little bit there between the brow follow the top part of the brow and around hopefully you can see already in the light it's just catching that bit there not too much because it'll be too intense around there take it down the center of the nose a bit again not too much just remember a little bit on the nose there on the end now what I'm going to do is make sure I can keep it into this V area here because I want the light reflecting up into my eyes. And I've already spent a bit of time here trying to create a little bit of a light shelf here so I don't want to go ruining that effect. So just pop it in here and just sweep it up a little bit along those lines. Just work it in. Now be a bit careful because as you can see with this old face of mine I've got a little bit, quite a few lines underneath there and I've put too much of this on. It just clogs into those and instead of being enhancing it just looks a lot worse so be a little bit careful take it up there and again pick it up the same side sweep it out a bit okay it's catching a little bit too much there just take a bit of it off can see an awful shadow here, but this is very, very strong light. A bit more on. I'm just going to take it along this tram line. So originally I had a line going from my temple area down here and also along the jawline down here. And if I was a bit careful, which I hope I have been, there's a nice little white patch coming down here. And the purpose really is to drag the light towards your lips. So let's do that. So from the centre bit in your ear here, this little bit here. I've taken a line, I'm just going to sweep about that bit of that in and around that area there. Just make sure that's okay. Um, I don't suffer too much from this, but if you've got a very square little bit here, don't put too much powder on there because it'll really emphasize that bit too much. Again, just turn the other side and gently put that in. Put a little bit of a mullet. Okay, just a final sort of check around. That looks reasonably good. I haven't touched in with powder or anything down here because I thought originally when I put the dark powder around in the contouring area here, it doesn't look so bad. And I don't really have too much of an issue with my nose. It's not a wobber, so that's okay. So let's just go with this a bit here just in case it's a bit too much anywhere. I reckon that's not too bad. So I'm just going to disappear for a second and put some earrings in and a little bit of hair around and I'll come back. So hang on a sec. So thank you very much for tuning in. That was of interest to some people. Thumbs up if you like it. Send us a comment. If you don't like it, I'm terribly sorry. We'll do the best we can next time. We'll do better next time maybe. But, uh, thank you very much for watching and have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And if you'd like to contact us, our socials are on the left-hand side. You know what to do.